Okay, so now we're ready to move on to the uh, sixth turn, March and April 1919. So we need to roll for initiative. And once again, the Reds have dominated initiative. They're just really dictating the pace of what's going on here. So we'll do that. Okay. So let's see what random event the Whites will be able to come up with this turn. They roll an eight. Ooh, I think that's partisans. It is. Select an available white partisan unit and place it per rule 20.8. So what would be, let's see, let's make sure we got the rules right. Placement of white partisans. When a white partisan enters the game, it is placed in a vacant hex, which meets the following, at least four hexes from any white unit. So it has to be four hexes away. It may not be a red city in red terror, um, a supply source, or in a red zone of control. And Siberian partisans must be placed in the east front. South Russian partisans must be placed in the south front. And the Basmachi partisans must be placed in the central Asian front. So that's actually pretty interesting here. <laughs> Which ones will I use? I could use, so let's take a look at the, let's get a nice little. So obviously I don't think I'm gonna use them in the north because this is its own supply source, uh, Tashkent is. So I can't even cut them off per se by holding that city, you know? Not necessarily what I need to do. Although they could begin moving up and doing other things. Um, but I could use them in the east, and I could take Simbirsk with them, which is ridiculous. Um, that doesn't really necessarily help me with um, cutting their supply. Uh, do they get Nizhny? I feel like I didn't put some of these markers down earlier. Yeah, I'm looking at some of my garrison units I have here for the Reds, and I realize they have some numbers on them, which means they probably should have been uh, in there in the begin with. So this is 3105. Yeah, so there should actually have been a garrison in there, but I know that's been eliminated. So that's, oh, maybe they just got eliminated. Maybe that was the whole thing, right? I think that was the whole thing. Um, 1708. Oh yeah, he was eliminated. Yes, yeah, so maybe I just killed these guys. Maybe I'm being silly. Anyway. Ooh, so that could be a nice opportunity. Take some beers and further draw forces away, or I could hold Vyadka and or take Nizhny. Nizhny would be maybe a little too good, because then I could just, you know, sort of sacrifice play to Moscow. Um, that would be kind of ridiculous to grab that. That would be so ridiculous. Um, if I just had better position in my units, I could make better use of this partisan unit. Um, I kind of wonder, though, if it's not worth trying to put it in some beers and just being a total pain, which I think is what I'm going to do. So, yeah, we'll take our available um, partisan unit for the Siberians. It is more than four hexes away. Boom. We now control that city. Reds lose one, so that is one resource. That is, that is an interesting development there. Okay, so that was the whites. All right, red random event. Rolls at nine, I think that's red leader. No, it's river flotilla. Place a red river flotilla if available, and it's not winter, and it's not, with any supplied red infantry or cavalry unit on a river, including the Volga, but excluding the Vistula. Interesting. <laughs> oh, the Vistula is the river in Poland, of course. So they get a river. <coughs> now, river combat is, is handy here, sort of, but not to where we're going, even though we have partisans down here in some beers. But it's more handy maybe for us down here, because I could put a guy in Zaritsyn, which would help, and also maybe put a guy down here with Novo Chesharsk. But I think what we'll do is we'll just put it in Zaritsyn because that gives us a nice ability to put another unit there. Yeah, it's it's on the Volga. Um, 
you see it has unlimited movement because during their movement phase they can move anywhere free of zone of control to another unit that's uh, cavalry or infantry on a river as long as that connects to it so we'll keep it there and that's a nice little addition to help fortify as already seen for the reds actually it's quite the boon for them to get okay so we've done that now we go to strategic movement oh no we do mock no allegiance phase so we can see, of course, that the reds are much closer. So now this becomes the uh, white Machno. Interesting. Okay, and now we do strategic movement. Um, Armed Force South Russia not going to utilize that. Neither will the Siberians. The, red <coughs> the reds will take this opportunity to move the red train. Uh, I think we'll actually keep it in Tsaritsyn for now. Yeah, I'll we'll keep it in Tsaritsyn. And everybody else I think is pretty good. I don't think I'm going to move anybody else. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, I like everybody else's movement, so I'll take care of that. So now we get to decide what we want to start off with and we could try to maybe focus down here this is this could easily start getting out of hand and we'll need to maybe start grouping in on some guys and doing some damage if we can uh, we do have this to worry about i'm less worried about this though honestly so i think we'll start with the um southern front uh although technically they could just kind of run out and go grab and go attack an army out there but i think that that's less likely for them to want to do that I don't think there's a reason for them to want to do that, but we'll see. Maybe they might. So I think we'll deal with the southern front here uh, first. Okay, so we'll take the south jet out, and we'll say that'll be our first one. First, these guys go back in. Clip, clip, clip. Okay. So, southern activation. Okay, what to do here? Zaritsyn now is no, I'm a little less afraid now because of getting that uh, flotilla. That was kind of nice. Um, could have also got an armor train. That would have also been handy. Uh, or an airplane. Would have been probably the most handy. Um, but here we go. We got these units here. I kind of want to put pressure on these guys. I need to start. Um, and I can actually start bringing some more guys down here, right? I wonder if it's worth trying to go crush the Machnos, but I don't think that's really worth it either. And um, but I don't want them to take Harkov. And I really need to look up what's up with the Machnos. Like what? I think they just count as your own. I mean, partisans can take cities. Oh yeah. So the these cities are always considered neutral unless a non-Machno unit moves in and takes it. That's what it is. That's a that's kind of a big deal. But it looks like Oh, I see. Oh, I dig. Okay. Resources controlled by neutral units like Polish, the Machno, the Nationalist Garrisons, and the Vondergold's Free Corps before the Free Corps random event has occurred count towards either side's total. If they take things, they're considered neutral hexes, so it won't even matter. The Machnos couldn't even take Harkov. That would be still considered a neutral hex. So that's interesting. So that means I really don't have to worry about guarding Harkov that much. So I wonder if I can just bring this guy down and maybe shift this army over here. Maybe one, two, three. It still is not close enough to get to the red train. One, two, three. Yeah, but it could hang on that city maybe. That's what we'll do. We'll move him here. He'll come down here. Is it worth making a one-to-one -one attack, though, on that guy? Or am I being stupid? Man, I could really use some more armies down here. <laughs> There's still quite a few forces hanging around here in the south. Yeah, that's that's a stack to be that's a super killer stack. 
hate to just seed ground to them, but I could also start bringing more to bear on Tsaritsyn. I can't really quite get a nice round. I mean, I can almost do this, right? Because I could be like, one, two, three. Shift the army out of there and bring a weakened army in and get like a... Uh, an attack on that guy, which would be 12. And I think he only has six there, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, so it would be a two to one attack. And I would have lots and lots of advantages. Um, yeah, I think I could actually do that. I think that's actually maybe what we're gonna have to do because uh, I'm a little afraid of this tank and it doesn't have any advantages really for them on the defense. So maybe that's what we gotta do. Get a little risky here. Oh, so what does that mean exactly? One, two. Yeah, so we'll do that. We'll go one, two, three. Shift this guy over to Rostov to hold that. I will bring this guy over. One, two, three. I'll hang on that river. Take the 10th army out of here and go one, two. Um, yeah, it would have been maybe nice to have that flotilla there. I thought about putting that flotilla there to aid an attack here, and I probably should have, but it's a little more worried about uh, the defense of Zaritz, and, and that probably was maybe an unfounded worry. So yeah, we'll do that. And that probably would have been nice, because if I get a bad roll, this could be not so good. But I gotta, I gotta do something on this front, right? I gotta do something with the Reds here. Okay, let's move this over just a snitch. Okay, so we're gonna do an attack on this stack. Um, it does have six units, we have 12. It is a two to one attack. It is in the clear, so it gets no defensive bonuses. Let's roll some die. Hmm. <laughs> Not so great, two to three. So I was gonna favor the whites because they have an amazing amount of units there, right? They have three, four, five. So they get 15. 16, 17, 18, 19. And we have six plus nine is 15. So we can actually, uh, oh, God damn it. I just remember, I'm sorry, explicit language. Um, what do we say? We had uh, five, so 15, 19, is that what it, yeah, 19. And they had um, 15, so that's a minus four differential. And a two to one attack as a, t as a capital A retreat. So that was not so good. But sometimes you got to do that. I mean, I could just like hold out, but then they'll get the advantage of taking on stacks one at a time and just slowly wearing me down, which is probably not awful, but sometimes, you know, you got to gotta take, adv take advantage. <sighs> so this guy will go one, two. This guy will go one, two. One, two. I think I have to be at least two hexes away, so that works. I believe, right? Let me make sure that last guy has to, he may have to retreat somewhere else, but let me double check. Yeah, at least two hexes away. So that, that works for me, that's two X's away. It is one, two, at least two, so it is two. Um, so yeah, they kind of got repulsed back there. Those tanks, man, they just really, really helping them out because otherwise they would only have, what, four units there? Yeah, they only have four units there and that would only been a 12, so it would have been... Yeah, and that would have shifted that from being a capital A-R to just a little A, which would have been far more advantageous for the Reds. So, hmm, going first there didn't really help them out and may indeed have made them uh, vulnerable to losing Tsaritsyn. I don't know. Yeah, maybe I should have actually moved. Yeah, that's what I should have done. This guy will actually go here. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's what he'll do. Although technically he can't go that way. Yeah, he actually has to go here. Guy has to go there, yep. So actually I've left the way open for Zaritsyn. Oh man, that's a 
That's an interesting turn. Oops, I thought that attack was definitely good. Might have been really terrible. Oops. Okay, south. Uh, northwest. So let me take a look at what is the deal with the Northwest units. So, supply. Let's see. Do, 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 do. So that is Rival is its supply. What blocks supply? Enemy or neutral units, enemy or neutral Zoc, which is enemy controlled cities. So yeah, okay, I'm sorry. The reason I'm thinking about that is because right we're over here with the Northwest Army and I'm trying to think if they can go get Minsk for me, but I don't think they can because they don't have a uh, supply. They pretty much have to go attack, I guess, unless the Polish people move because they're neutral and they block supply. They pretty much have to go attack Petrograd, I guess. So maybe that's just what they have to do and I moved them down there for no reason. Yeah. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll take one, two, three, and I will move this Wander Gold's unit. He doesn't really have any supply, it looks like. He just gets to do what he wants. So we'll just go one, two, three. And the goal is eventually maybe bring him up here. And if we get that free free core event, then he can assist in the attack there. That, that would be pretty interesting. Um, okay, so that was the Northwest. East Chit. And the East, we've got these issues. Hmm. We've got that pesky, pesky pe uh, partisan unit, which will get more annoying if we let it run around and do more. So we're going to have to deal with it, I think. Um. Yeah, that's how we'll have to do that. And technically, no, they still have supply. He doesn't really, he doesn't affect them. So yeah, we'll have to bring these guys back. I think we'll push these guys maybe forward into Ufa and attack the garrison at Ufa. Because that's how we're going to keep our supply lines open. So yeah, I think this will be a dual pronged attack. So we'll take this guy and go one, two, three, so he can be on the Volga. One, two, three, he'll attack there. I think what we'll do here is we'll go one, two, three, and we'll leave a garrison there in Ishwisk. Latvian rifles will go one, two, right there. This guy, see there, yeah, another shift over here. It doesn't matter, he could have made it anyway. Oh yeah, so we'll have a two-pronged attack because I want to start just cleaning up the white presence here and this is the best way to do that. So we'll start with this combat here. Looks like we got eight to one. Uh, he gets a defensive shift, so it becomes um, seven to one, but that just still is four to one attack odds. And I think we pretty much got this one covered. Yeah, we roll a six, he rolls a five, so we get 12 plus six is 18. Uh, he gets a five, so we get a plus 13 differential on a four to one. And that is a DR retreat. Uh, so he takes that and he retreats two hexes to two. Actually, I'll go one, two. Oh, hang on, Volsk. <laughs> Be more of a pain. Um, Yeah, well, this army will advance and take some Birsk. So that drops the whites back down to zero, brings the reds back up to eight. And now we'll do this combat on this garrison. That's a four, eight, 12, so it's 12. Yeah, again, no defensive, uh, oh, I guess a city bonus, so it's still four to one. So we roll die. Oh, yeah, this is gonna give us four, so we have one, two, three, four, it's, Four times four is 16, 
69 is 25, and then 26, 27. Yeah, so I mean, we get the automatic dr. So he's out. If that is gone. And I'll go ahead and bring the Latvian rifles up because it makes it just slightly tougher for them to crack that nut because it's going to have five manpower points instead of four. Okay, so there we go. East Army is making their progress, doing what they got to do. Oh, wait, I also forgot to move the partisan. And he is increasingly important to our plans here. We will go one, two, three, and we're going to slowly wait, make our way to Omsk. So we're going to have to eventually figure out what the Siberians are going to have to do about that. Field snap chit. I've already had the south and the east activate, and I don't think there's anybody else I want to move. I guess I could send this guy, as long as he stays within five hexes, I could start sending him down to take Kiev. Um, can he do that? If he goes here, he's still five. If he goes five here, yeah, he could do that. So maybe we'll bring him down and do that. So we'll activate the west front and go one, two, three. And we'll keep him there. Although this Northwest Army is kind of prowling, I would maybe be stupid to keep that there. So maybe I won't keep that. That's something I need to think about is maybe attacking Kiev and getting that hex uh, before these guys ever do. Well, I guess I'm not going to do anything with the field staff chit. Yeah. All right. All right. North and Islamic. All right, so we've got the ability now because of the rally we had. We now have the ability to take on a unit in Tashkent, which I think we're just going to go for. Because we can't ever be guaranteed of an AIF jet coming up and giving us the advantage of having this, um, not that guy, that guy coming on us out, which would be nice, which would be nice, but we're not going to have it. Uh, so we're going to move up here, we're going to go one, two, three, and we're going to attack. So he is in a city. Uh, so he does get a defensive bonus. It was one to one, so it'll be one to two. And uh, we roll die. Not what we needed. Uh, three and a six. So he gets a four. We get three times two is six. We get seven, eight, nine. 29, if he gets a 4, we get a plus 5 differential on a 1 to 2. Yeah, but that's good enough. Uh, AD result, just barely good enough. And that is one attacker, one defender. He's gone. Go ahead and have the uh, north take the loss. And actually, not the north because it's irreplaceable. Oh, they're both irreplaceable. Well, we'll just have that happen. So I have him do that. And then we're going to take that city. So that's actually big. Um, yeah, because the garrison goes away if its unit dies with it. So it dies, garrison goes away, we take that city. The Soviet scourge is temporarily removed from the Central Asian Front. There's much rejoicing, much celebration over in the desert. Okay. Well, that was nice. That was an unexpected little turn. That means if I was going for the full game, I've just made it much more difficult for the Reds to... They're going to spend a lot of time and resources getting guys over there, mainly time. Uh, it's, it would take several turns just to get over there, so that's pretty interesting. All right. Logistics just in time, because if they had gotten that and rallied that unit, that would have been a much more dicey battle. Okay, it's logistics. We take a look and say, is anybody out of supply? It does not appear so. I'm looking around. Nope, everybody's in supply. So let's go ahead and start with the rolls down here, because we're looking at this front here. Uh, what do we have? North Caucasus and the AFSR. So we're going to roll two dice. The AFSR will be the red one. Hey, AFSR rallies. 
up above. That's actually really big. And we'll see the Don Cossacks rally. They do not. Okay. All these armies around here rally. That is unfortunate. If we could have gotten our chit, we might have had a good ability to uh, tackle Zaritsyn. That was scary for a second. But now, thanks to the red train, thanks to Trotsky rallying the troops, um, it's automatic, and we'll see if this guy rallies too. Nope. Alright, is there anybody else to rally? I think we have some Polish armies that miraculously did not get rallied. Yeah, so we'll roll two dice for them. And they get one more. Dang. Good work, Poland. You're going to be quite the adversary. Alright, I have some Northwest units. No, they're actually they're all full. Everybody's good to go there. Wow. Okay, we've got an AIF unit in the north. I'm going to roll four. He does not. All right, let's go up to Siberia. Actually, we'll do this. We're in Tashkent for that guy. That brave soldier there. And he does not rally. Um, the Siberian partisan and also this one on the side is not in supply, so they won't rally. Um, None of these guys are hurt up here, so it just has to do with the ones hanging out here. So let's go ahead and roll these two dice up here, and we'll make the peoples the red die. Yeah, people, people's rally. So that's helpful. I believe we just have one unit injured here, yeah? So we'll see if West can rally. No. Okay, I think that's it. Everybody has rallied. We did logistics. Do I want to pick up any garrisons? No. Nope, I haven't really done a lot of garrison in this game. Uh, so I don't think I'm going to pick up any garrisons. Nope, nope, nope. All right, back to the next chip. Armed forces of South Russia is just one too late, unfortunately. Well, did have one advantage of that combat earlier was that we did, or that they were not going to be able to kill armies, which would have been really nice, but we are going to be able to maybe take advantage of the fact that a lot of terrain has opened up here now. Oof, I am so tempted to make that drive, though, still on Zaritsyn, because if I get a retreat result... That would be really tempting, but then I would just get swarmed the next turn and then lose a lot of guys, and it's not really that worth it, even though I would they would no longer have the benefit of uh, the Red Bird done if I do make them leave. And honestly, I will lose the tanks when the allies start withdrawing, so I've got to use it or lose it. Um, but maybe this is the time we drive west. Maybe this is when we do the big west move and put some pressure over here and start diluting some of the strength over here, which I think we, we should do that now. Okay, that's a great idea, actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to get into uh, here. I think the way we're going to do that is we're going to take this fun... Yeah, this is what we'll do. Do they have good quality guys? They do. Pretty happy with that, that stack. It'll come here. Bring these guys over here. Um, this Cossack unit is fairly secure. I don't think these guys can come down here. Um, but just to be safe, we'll put him just down here. Although I don't really want to hamper retreat efforts. So yeah, we'll actually we'll just keep him there. And uh, we'll go ahead and bring the pain here on the old 8th Army. I think it's pretty much a foregone conclusion. Uh, we are on the river that goes into Rostov. Rostov is a city, though. We have 246, 246. I think this is also six. Yeah, one, two, three, yeah, four, five, six. So it's um, six, 12, 18. So that's three to one. It's gonna be two to one there. Uh, so we'll roll the die. Oh, that's an even four, four. So we obviously are just gonna win this because we have so many more units. I mean, I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, like twelve units. Yeah, so I mean, we automatically uh, are gonna get the buy best we can get on um, two to one. Um, 
and that's Defender Retreat, capital D. So he takes a loss, and he'll beat a hasty retreat up here to Lugansk. And I think we will bring the killer stack into Rostov. Oh, you know, I really should have primed that guy there. Yeah, I'm gonna make that... Sorry, that's probably a little bit cheating because I knew that combat went well. But I don't think it was ever not gonna go well. So we'll keep it like that. Um, yeah, I think that's what we'll do there. So that's pretty good. And we did get a point there. We got a resource. We took one away from the reds. So yay! Uh, Rostov is in our hands. And uh, that's what we're gonna do there for them. I guess we'll send the mock nose up here. We'll have him just take Harkov because he can move on up to two out. So he's up there. Although technically it's still sent. Oh, that's right. It just stays neutral. But honestly, he'll be really annoying if he just sits in Harkov. So I think we'll just do that. Something else I should have done. But that's the way. That's the way it goes sometimes when you record solo. You take liberties. Southwest front, um, there's nothing in the Southwest front. So, you keep doing your thing in the Southwest, friends, eh? Wish you were in a different front. That may become more helpful a little later, but it's not helpful right now. AIF, again, I don't think the AIF are just gonna do anything. There's just nothing for them to do. The guys holding Samarakand is cool. The Petru guys are there, fine, yeah. One of those non, Non-moving, non-moving token tokens. Same thing with the Polish. I'm pretty happy with where they're at right now. That leaves the very last chit, which of course is our friends in the north, and technically the east, the Siberians. I guess east from the uh, Bolshevik perspective. This whole map is, is, is bias of the Bolsheviks. It's Bolshevik bias. Okay. We do have a severe threat in the fact that uh, we do have this partisan unit that is uh, escally going to go in the back and, and, and be quite, become quite annoying if we don't take care of it. So I think we're going to have to send a cavalry unit to go deal with it. I would like to make a sortie maybe and come damage guys, but honestly, this is that's just going to be too hard. Although it would be so wonderful. They are relatively understaffed here. If I could just I could come out in force maybe try to damage both these units, that would be really helpful. Um, but that is five, and I only have, what, two, four, five, one, three, five, so I could bring ten. I mean, that's just, it's two to one odds. It would become, I couldn't even get the ship, so it would be one to two odds, because I wouldn't be able to get on the river, and he'd still have the city defense, so... That's not worth it at all for me right now. That's unfortunate, and it's just super unfortunate. So I think what we'll do is we will have to maybe... Yeah, I think we're going to take the Siberian Cossacks out. And they're just going to go one, two, four. And they'll come over here and uh, sort of play you know, try to keep this partisan unit from doing what it needs to do. Although that draws them away from here, it makes this an easier side, they have to go further away, I don't know. Lots of ifs, ands, or buts. Okay, well, that's the end of that turn. So let's take a look at the map. Um, down here, we've got kind of a interesting situation where a failed attack by the Reds, which was fairly quickly remedied or assuaged or mollified or your favorite your favorite descriptive term there by the red train but we're going to take advantage of the whites and try to grab some resource taxes because we desperately need resources to keep the whites from evacuating we need at least three to keep them from wanting to run away at this next uh, strategic turn uh we have to move these guys up here because i think we're going to maybe just try to make a move on petrograd i don't know um siberians holding out sending that guy there we just did that move here come the reds though Having to deal with that partisan unit, very annoying. Oh, I guess I could have moved him. Forgot about the fact that I can move that partisan unit. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think we will move him. 
And we'll go one, two, and he will come down and take Saratov. Can't leave a garrison in Bolsk because he doesn't do that, but I will hold Saratov because if holding that means the lifeline for Tsaritsyn can only come from this rail line. So we still have that cavalry unit marker. I don't know, we might be able to do some funny things, but this gets him even further away from these armies and either has to draw from here or from here. And the goal is really to draw away forces from this conflict. So I think that'll, that'll work fine. I'm glad I just noticed that. Anyway, as the board, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, of course, the smashing victory in the north with the, uh, taking out the uh, red army there and uh, getting Tashkent. So that's very nice, very nice. Some interesting developments. Anyway, it's a nice little bird's eye view of the whole map. And when we come back, turn seven, May 1919.